Hello everybody, Yannick Chauvin once again, and we're going to uh, look at part two of the portrait makeover. And this time we're going to be uh, going through removing pimples and diminishing wrinkles in the skin. Now, I, of course, I didn't say remove all the wrinkles because we won't, uh, but we will uh, diminish them a little bit. I want to make sure that my person stays somewhat human at the end of this whole process. So uh, we'll, we'll be doing that together. Now, if you missed part one of my tutorial, you can go check it out. Uh, I put the link right above the uh, video. It's uh, on uh, whitening teeth and eyes. Um, so let's get to it. So this is a photo of uh, world-renowned opera singer Steve Michaud, who lives in my neck of the woods in Gatineau, Quebec. And um, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, do all his new promo shots for uh, his marketing campaign and his website and uh, his brochures and everything. So we had a lots and lots of fun together. Uh, we did quite a. We went on location, which is uh, under the the uh, canal bridge in, in Ottawa, and we did some studio shots as well. And if you want to check it out, I put the link to his website, and you can go check out my images there and check out what he does. Alrighty, now back to the drawing board, removing pimples and uh, reducing wrinkles. Now the first thing we'll be doing is duplicating our layer, and I'll bring the layers palette over so you can see that. And how we do that is pretty simple. It's Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac. It's that simple. You can always go in the Layers palette here, Duplicate Layer, and do it from there as well. But I like the shortcut keys. Now, uh, the reason why we do a duplicate layer is that we don't want to work on our original. And uh, it's just for si a precaution whatsoever for, for now. We will be using a duplicate layer, la layer later on um, when, we're, when we'll be uh, uh, reducing the wrinkles as well, and it will have uh, an influence at that point. But for now, let's start by removing stuff. I'll double click on the um, zoom tool to get 100%. Sometimes you need to get even closer than that, but it's a nice headshot, so we'll keep it at 100%. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is remove the things that we want 100% removed, so completely off the face. Um, and that's what we'll do. Now you can do that in two ways. You can use uh, the spot healing brush or the regular healing brush. The spot healing brush, what it does is that you don't have to select a source point to get the information from. It'll go around where you're actually doing and remove um, some of the imperfections in the skin by looking at the texture around uh, the healing area and uh, doing its magic and getting the information there. I rarely use this. I prefer complete control over what I'm doing. so. I'll use the regular healing brush. Now what you need to do with this is to uh, um, find a source point where you want the texture to be taken from and then applied to uh, the pimples uh, or the skin imperfections. And the way you do that is by cl uh, holding and the Alt key down. And then you see that there's a crosshair that appears in the middle of my circle. And that says, well, select a point. And you do that by left clicking on the mouse. So a regular click, like so, removing the Alt, uh, releasing the Alt key, and then you're ready to go. And you can see the crosshair just below. And it'll always source from that point. All right. Contrary to the clone tool, that'll always follow the cursor. This one always stays at the same spot. And you can start. And then if you want to select another area, you go click the Alt key, hold it down, left mouse button, let go, and you're ready to go. And you have a new source point. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, I want to emphasize the fact that a small brush size is super, super important because it's getting light information as well. Um, so the bigger your brush, the more light information it will get around your subject. And uh, sometimes what it'll do, and I'll show you right now with this small brush, if I'm going too close to the edge here with the white on the other side, or I should say blue, um, if I'm healing there, you can see that it's getting the, the information from the other side. So you've you got to be careful when you're going close to edges. And uh, we'll see why that's important when we're uh, retouching close to the eyes as well. So again, select your source point. And once you're, you're used to it, you'll be going pretty fast at this. Now, I'm only removing 
uh, skin imperfections that I want 100% removed from this image. All right, and that excludes wrinkles. I don't want to create a plastic Ken Barbie doll here. That's really really important. Okay, so I just want to remove some imperfections, and then we'll touch the wrinkles. Like so, starting to look good, even on the lips here a little bit. That's looking good. Now you can spend a lot of time doing this, but uh, for purpose of this tutorial, I'll make it quick. And that's looking good. Okay, let's leave it at that for now. I could, I could uh, still work on it a little bit, but... Uh, we're always pressed for time, aren't we? So I want to keep this tutorial down, hopefully under 10 minutes. OK, next thing we want to do is flatten the image, and then Control-J once again to uh, uh, duplicate the image. Now, to flatten your image, what you need to do is go into Layer, and then Flatten Image. Now, I've created a shortcut key of F2 on my keyboard, because I do it a lot. I don't know what the original, uh, the original code was, or if there was one, but for me, uh, it's F2. All right. Now that I've reduplicated my layer, I'm going to remain with my healing brush, and I'm going to start removing wrinkles. Now they're going to be disappearing at 100% because that's how my brush is right now. But that's all right. Don't worry. We're, we're going to bring them back a little bit. All right. We're, we won't make sure. We'll make sure that he's not a Ken doll. Okay. Now we've done the forehead, now let's do the eyes. Now try to be as close to the texture of the eyes as possible. You know, sometimes if we go get some cheek texture, it doesn't match. It's not the same kind of skin texture. So make sure you're as close to the, the eye as possible and just do some small strokes. Like so. Starting to look good. Okay, so this is one eye. Let's do the other eye. Remember to get the right skin texture. I was very frustrated at first when I used this under the eyes because I always kept getting my texture from the cheek until I realized that uh, the skin was completely different under the eyes. So if it can help you guys out, it'll save you some hardship down the road. Okay, it's starting to look good. I could work on it another few minutes, but we'll just leave it at that for now. Kind of like this. Okay. I'll just remove some of the redness here. Okay. Now I've removed everything. Now what we want to do is bring back some of uh, those wrinkles so that the person looks human. And what, how we do that is by going to the opacity of our layer and then just reducing it. It's that simple. You can see under the eyes, on the forehead, it's coming back. So we want something around 50% for this person. Looks good. Before and after. Before and after. So you can still see the lines under the eyes a little bit, but they're diminished. Even the forehead lines are still there. So before and after. And that's how we remove uh, pimples and reduce wrinkles. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this part two of the tutorial. In part three, we're going to be looking at uh, adding some color to a person after a long winter without any sun. Uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, enhancing lips, uh, maybe put a little bit of rouge on the person, and some uh, eyeshadow. All uh, done with the magic of Photoshop. Thank you very much, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.